A wise man once said, you either die a hero or live long enough to see yourself become the villain. Might this also be the case for the well-known man, Napoleon Bonaparte? There's no denying in his impact on the world and his amazing feats and when he conquered Europe. But were those battles really necessary? Why did Napoleon fight these wars? And did he do it for the greater good or for himself? Well, let's find out. Hi, you're watching Corner of History and Beyond. We are going to take a look at the rise and fall of Napoleon Bonaparte and we'll find out if he was a hero or a villain. During the French Revolution in 1793, the King of France, Louis XVI, was executed in Paris. Napoleon was in a crowd when he saw with his own eyes how the King's head fell from his body. At that time, Napoleon rose through the ranks of the military because of his talent for leadership. In the same year, Napoleon went to Toulon, where his brother, Joseph Bonaparte, was stationed under Lieutenant General Jean-Francois Carteau. After the death of King Louis XVI, the city of Toulon started a rebellion against the new formed government in Paris. The people of Toulon were not happy that their king got beheaded and proclaimed his son, Louis XVII, their king. The new formed government in Paris did not tolerate this and sent an army to Toulon under the command of Lieutenant General Carteau. The people of Toulon were afraid they would have to fight for their freedom, so they asked England and Spain for help. England and Spain sent an army towards Toulon to protect the people of Toulon from the new formed government in Paris. Joseph Bonaparte observes Lieutenant General Carteau and quickly comes to the conclusion that Carteau is incompetent as a Lieutenant General and that he will fail to retake Toulon. When Napoleon arrives in Toulon, Joseph asks him to help retake Toulon together. Napoleon agrees and studies the situation in Toulon. Carteau has trouble deciding how to proceed an attack and holds a council of war whereby Napoleon and several high-ranking military personnel are present. While the high-ranking men are arguing about how to proceed, it is clear nobody really knows the answer. That is, until Napoleon speaks up. He looks at the map and states that the key to retake Toulon is to capture two forts on the hill of Cairo. The two forts served as a passage between the harbors of the port. By overtaking them, they would be able to cut the maritime resupply. Carteau was reluctant of this idea and did not want to go through with this. Eventually, Carteau had to step down and was replaced by Jacques-Francois Ducomier. He saw potential in Napoleon's plan. He let Napoleon carry his plan out. After some time, the forts fell and Toulon had no choice but to surrender. Napoleon succeeded and because of his achievement, he got promoted to the rank of Brigadier General. During the battle at Toulon, Napoleon met Paul Barra. Barra was a French politician of the French Revolution and the main executive leader of the Directory regime. The Directory was a committee that consisted of five members that ruled France from 1795 to 1799. Barra helped Napoleon to go to Italy in 1796 to take over the Italian army. The Austrian army had invaded the rich north of Italy and under the command of Napoleon the French achieved many victories and he became more well known among friends and foes alike. He became a hero to the French people because of the glorification of his victories by the historians from that period. However, these historians saw the Directory as an ineffective dictatorship whereby senseless violence and corruption were main components. As such, the people of France did not support the Directory. Due to falsified elections, the Directory managed to keep in power. Eventually, because of the tension between the Directory and the common people, the army of France gained more influence over the common people. This escalated and something had to be done. Emmanuel Joseph C.S., a member of the Directory, prepared a coup. He needed someone strong on his side, someone with an army. Therefore, he reached out to Napoleon Bonaparte. 
The plan was to use the troops in Paris to force the members of the Directory to resign. The members feared the power that Napoleon had over the troops and therefore had no choice but to resign. With Barat being captured, Sias planned to elect the president as the most powerful position and had himself in mind to take that position. However, Napoleon had other plans. He wanted to become the most powerful man in France. He introduced the consulate as the new government of France and declared himself as the first consul, whereby he would be the head of the consulate. To make it seem as if he wasn't a dictator, he appointed a second and third consul. However, they both had only advising roles. New consuls would be elected every three years, with Napoleon Bonaparte now having dominion over France, both the Directory and the French Revolution came to an end. After Napoleon became the most powerful man in France, his first goal was to get rid of all his enemies, and one by one he managed to achieve this goal. His enemies did not take kindly to this and put out a hit on Napoleon. However, the hit failed and Napoleon blamed the hit on his enemies, which made it easier for him to capture or kill them. During the French Revolution, the Pope's power was completely eliminated and the church and state were separated. Napoleon realized that to truly end the French Revolution, it was necessary to reconcile the state and church. By achieving this, he could also strive for more control over the church. To succeed in his plan, Napoleon went to commune with the Pope after winning the Battle of Marengo in Italy against the Austrians whereby the French defeated the Austrians and drove them out of Italy. After a long negotiation process, the Pope and Napoleon agreed to the Concordat of 1801. This gave Napoleon more power over the church. Another thing that Napoleon did, after he came in power, was to stop the war between France and the United Kingdom that began in 1793. The Treaty of Amiens in 1802 ended the hostilities between both countries. Afterwards, Napoleon changed the constitution so that he would be the first consul for life. Napoleon had all the power and reigned as a dictator. He controlled the media and press and imprisoned or killed anyone who opposed him. In 1804, he crowned himself in the presence of the Pope as Napoleon I, Emperor of the French. A year later, he was also crowned King of Italy. Napoleon created the famous Napoleonic Code before the Napoleonic Code, France did not have a single set of laws. Law consisted mainly of local customs. The purpose of the Napoleonic Code was that the law would be written and clear, and that everyone would know their rights. The law would be the same for the whole country. After the treaty with England, France and England still had disagreements about withdrawing troops. Eventually, England declared war on France in 1803 and in 1804, Sweden declared war on France. Following that year, in 1805, Austria and Russia declared war. You would think that France wouldn't stand a chance against these armies and that they would be crushed, especially against Austria, which was a powerhouse back then. But on the contrary, France pulverized the enemies in 1806 and France ended up occupying Vienna, the capital of Austria. Because of the genius strategy by Napoleon, his strategy was to make it seem as if his right flank was weakened, and by trying to negotiate with his enemies, he then would hope that the enemies would try to attack the French right flank with many men, all while the French would attack the center, where the enemy's side would be weaker. This turned out to be Napoleon's greatest victory. France also defeated Russia, whereby Russia was forced to sign a boycott of England. This boycott was meant to hurt the economy of the English by forcing Europe to not trade with England anymore. Eventually, France took over almost the entirety of Europe in 1812. The boycott against England also had a negative impact on the Russian economy because they were dependent on the trade with England. Therefore, the Russians decided to ignore the boycott and to trade with England. Napoleon did not take this kindly and in 1812, Napoleon decided to bring an army of 500,000 men with different nationalities to Russia. The Russians were prepared for this and positioned an army at the border. 
Napoleon's strategy was to invade Russia and defeat the army just over the border so that they wouldn't have to invade Russia too far and they could avoid the severe weather conditions in Russia. After the Russians saw how big the army of Napoleon was, they decided to pull back their army, forcing Napoleon's army to invade Russia more than just across the border. On the way back, the Russians applied the strategy of scorched earth. The strategy meant that they would destroy anything that might be useful to the enemy, so that Napoleon's army couldn't use the resources that the Russians would leave behind. This meant that Napoleon's army had a tough time to go through. A lot of men in their army became ill because of this. There just wasn't enough resources to treat everyone and the difficult weather conditions made it a lot harder for them. Therefore a lot of their men died before even starting the battle against the Russians. When the battle finally started, Napoleon wasn't able to defeat the Russians before the Russians decided to pull back even further. Eventually, Napoleon's army reached Moscow. The Russians already left Moscow and even lit Moscow on fire. Napoleon had lost already so many men and now he was at a crossroads. Should he continue to fight and risk losing the war and getting captured? Or should he go back to France and accept that he lost the battle? After losing the battle in Russia, Napoleon returned to France with his tail between his legs. Although he claimed that he lost the battle due to the difficult weather conditions and not because of the Russians. The losses of Napoleon's army caused the occupied countries to rebel against France. This led to a battle between Napoleon's army and the coalition armies of Austria, Prussia, Sweden and Russia in Leipzig in 1813. Napoleon lost his battle and was forced to retreat. Before he could return to Paris. The Allied already invaded France and occupied Paris. When Napoleon returned to Paris with his army to march on the capital, his senior officers and marshals mutinied. Napoleon was forced to announce his unconditional abdication by the Allied. He was exiled to the island of Elba. They gave him sovereignty over the island and allowed him to retain the title of Emperor. The next year Napoleon had a depression and tried to kill himself by poisoning himself. The poison wasn't strong enough, which is why he survived. Napoleon was separated from his wife and son and was cut off from the allowance guaranteed to him by the new king of France, Louis XVIII. He was also aware of rumors that he would be banished to a more remote island. Napoleon therefore escaped Elba with 700 men. Napoleon wanted to become the most powerful man in Europe again. So he went to France to Paris. Along the way he regained a bigger army because the French people believed in him again. The French did not like the way the new king was ruling and wanted Napoleon to become their leader again. When Napoleon arrived in Paris the king Louis XVIII fled to Belgium while Napoleon was in control once again. He tried to make it seem as if he only wanted peace now but the Allied didn't fall for it. They saw how Napoleon tried to form a bigger army. In 1815 the Battle of Waterloo was fought between the French army and the United Kingdom, the Netherlands, Hanover, Brunswick and Nassau. After the Prussians joined the battle at the side of the Allied, the French lost the battle. The British and the Prussians invaded France and occupied Paris. Napoleon tried to escape towards the United States of America. However, he was captured by the British before he could escape. Napoleon was made to abdicate in Paris. Napoleon thought he would be killed by the guillotine and tried to negotiate with the British so that he could go to the United Kingdom and escape death. However, the Allied agreed to not execute him, instead to exile him to the remote island of St. Helena, a British overseas territory located in the South Atlantic Ocean. There he had to spend his last years in a longwood house. Napoleon was tired from fighting and had already given up on his goal to become the most powerful man. In his last years he gained a lot of weight, barely ate and was in a constant fear of being poisoned through his food and wine. The way he was treated by his captivators did not help his health at all. He was even heard saying multiple times that he should have died in Moscow, that this is more torture than him dying there and then. His health 
was rapidly declining and in 1821 Napoleon Bonaparte uttered his final words on his deathbed before closing his eyes for the last time. So was Napoleon Bonaparte really a hero or a villain? You could definitely say he had a big impact on the world, both positively and negatively. In the one hand he made an end to the French Revolution, which made an end to all the terror in France, but in the other hand he ruled like a dictator, imprisoning or killing anybody who criticized him. Then again he did create the Napoleonic Code, whereby the people in France finally had laws that applied to everybody. However, he did start wars and led his army through many battles, letting a lot of men die in the process. Napoleon himself stated that he invaded countries purely because he wanted to create the United States of Europe, where the countries would unite and try to compete with the mighty United States of America. But instead of peaceful negotiations with other countries to achieve this goal, he decided that the best way to achieve this goal would be to invade the countries and destroy anybody who opposed him. He might have really wanted to create a unified Europe, however he also wanted to be the sole leader of this unified Europe. There is no denying his hunger for power. But did that make him a bad guy? Isn't it very human-like to always want more? So is Napoleon Bonaparte just a victim of the quote you either die or, or live long enough to see yourself become the villain? What do you think? Let me know in the comments if you think Napoleon was a hero or a villain. And hopefully I will see you in my next video. Thank you for watching.